After you use the tracker to create some track point keyframes, you need to apply those keyframes to something. You want to attach them, let's say, to an object in motion, or highlight the thing that you are following, or add an effect where the effect follows the motion. So to see how that works, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and go on down to 1602 Tracker Keyframes. All right, we've already tracked the kid on the bike, and we've already tracked the surfer. Let me go back to bicycles. And while you were away, I added one more tracker to the kid on the bike. I tracked the scale, too. So if you open up Bicycles here and take a look at the keyframes by pressing U, you're going to see there's a track point 1 under tracker 1 and a tracker 2 with two track points. When you track scale, you get a second track point. So you get this one and that one. And then they work together to determine what the scale is. You don't see anything here that says scale. But when you apply this to some other layer or some other object, then it automatically creates scale keyframes. It's pretty cool. So we're going to do that in a moment. We'll start off using the first tracker. So let me close this down. So what we're going to do first is take the tracker that just follows him and apply that to an effect that has a feature point. I'll show you what I mean here. Going to the Effect Controls panel, and I've applied the Radial Blur to this clip. I'm going to turn it on now. The Radial Blur has the center point there. It's called the center right there. and has this little target. When you see an effect that has a target, then you can use the tracker keyframes to control that target. So to do that, let's go over to the tracker. We need to say the motion source is the one that we tracked, which is bicycles. Inside bicycles, we've got two trackers. You've got the one that tracks scale and this one that we use first. So that's the one we want to use. Transform is the choice we want to do here. Sometimes when you come back, it doesn't say transform. It might say raw. So make sure you choose transform. And now we need to edit the target. We need to say, really, what is the target we're applying these tracker keyframes to? So we click on edit target. Now, normally you would see the word layer and have a bunch of layers to choose from. But if there's an effect that has an effect point control in it, then you can also have this option. It'll be available. And in this case, it looks and sees that we've got this effect that has a radial blur that has a center effect point control. So that's what we want to choose here. So I click OK. And a lot of people go, I clicked OK. Why isn't it working? Because you need to do one more thing, and that's to click this button down here that says Apply. We picked the target, but we haven't actually said apply that information to the target. So we click apply. Now it says, do you want to go X and Y or just X or just Y? Well, almost always you go X and Y. So we click OK. So now it's applied that tracker information to the center point. Let's just see that it lines up on that young man's face. There we go. It follows along just like that. So we've got this radial blur following his motion through the clip. There you go. He's already off the page. Let's go back a bit so he's still on the page there. There he is, just as he's going off the screen. I think that's pretty slick. I'm going to turn that off, though, for the time being, so we can go back and work on one more thing. I'd like to apply some text to them. Now, we've done this before manually, but now I'm going to do it automatically. We've got some text here. I'll turn them on so you can see it. This is fun in a shape layer. And rather than try to apply the tracker keyframes to each of these guys individually, which could be a problem because anchor points might kind of make things spread out and they would behave sort of unpredictably, it's best when you're trying to apply tracker points to more than one object if you put them both into a null layer. So I've got this null layer here that I added, and I've got them both parroted to the null layer by just dragging the pick whip over to the null layer. So this text layer and the shape layer are both parroted to the null layer. The null layer is the parent, and they are the children. So now we need to edit the target to the null layer. So you go back down here, say the motion source is bicycles. We use Tracker 2 this time, because Tracker 2 has the scale information. We want the text to get bigger as we go forward. Now we edit the target. OK, the target will be Null 2. That's the one we want to pick, not the text or not the shape, so Null 2. And click OK. We're not done. you got to click Apply, and then click OK, and now we're done. And now, what the heck, why isn't he lined up? Because basically it's lining up so that the anchor point for the null layer is in the center, and that puts everything else in the center too. Well, all we need to do is adjust the anchor point. Let me show you what's going on here. Here is the null layer, and here is the set of position keyframes that were added, and the interesting thing, the set of scale keyframes that were added that were kind of calculated based upon the keyframes that we got out of the tracker. And what I want to do now is just adjust the anchor point. Notice the anchor point does not have keyframes, so you can adjust this without affecting things down the way there. So I want to slide them over to the right and pop it up a little bit, so see how this works. Oh, I got two layers selected right now. That won't work. I'll deselect that and just select the null layer. There we go. Now I'll try that again. There we go. And we'll lift him up a little bit. So now things are lined up. And let's just see how this behaves by just kind of pulling it forward. I do see that the scale is kind of jumpy. The boy's bike was kind of wiggling back and forth. 
I was using this in his face as a way to set the scale, and so it's not the smoothest thing. And besides, we don't need to have all these keyframes, really. We can smooth it out a bit here. So I'm going to select scale here like that and select all of those keyframes and use the smoother to remove a bunch of those keyframes to make it easier to manage this. So I go up to Window, Smoother. And I want to set the tolerance to something like, oh, 12 or so like that. And click Apply. And that reduces the number of keyframes. Now let's see what it looks like. Scale still jumps around a bit. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all the keyframes in the middle here by just marquee selecting them, because all we need is the first one and the last one. So I'll delete them. And let's see what happens now. Still bouncing around, because the first and the last keyframe there are not linear. So I'm going to right-click on the first one there. Keyframe interpolation, I'm going to make it linear so it goes smoothly. And make the last one linear as well. Keyframe interpolation, make that one linear. Click OK. There we go. And now I think the scale will go smoothly. Good. And the attach point looks good too. The only thing is the scale is way, way big. It goes from 100 to 300. So let's change the 100 to, let's say, something like 50, I guess. That's more like what we want to do. Go to the last keyframe and change it to something more manageable, like 150 or something like that. Let's see how that works now. We probably want to use opacity to fade it out at the end anyways, but that is working. So we have scale helping us out here. It wasn't horribly important to use scale there, but I did want to show you that you can use it. Okay, let's go over to surfing. I want to highlight the surfer. And there are a couple ways to go about highlighting something after you've done some motion tracking. You can create a shape layer like this, and then you can convert that shape layer into an adjustment layer by just clicking right down here in this checkbox below that half moon thing there. So now the shape layer is an adjustment layer. And if I apply an effect to it, I'll go over here and go hue saturation, for example. And let's scroll on down so you can see that. We'll drag that to the shape layer and adjust the hue there. That works okay. Let's just see how that looks, basically. That's fine. It'll look like a good highlight, but it's kind of a sharp edge. And you can't really adjust that sharp edge. Even with the blur, it'll still be a sharp edge with a blur in the inside. So I'm not a real fan of using that because of the sharp edge. But I think you can use a white solid like this and add a mask to it. So I'll turn that one on. There's a white solid. And I put a mask in that white solid. And the thing about masks is that you can feather them. If you open up the mask there for a second. There it goes. And there's the mask. And you can feather the mask, which is nice. So you can have a soft edge to it if you use a mask on a white solid. So that's kind of the way I like to go when I want to highlight things. Convert that to an adjustment layer. Apply the hue saturation effect to it. Pull this down a bit. And adjust that as well. And that works. But I think it would be cooler here to kind of make the background a little bit out of focus and have it be a different color and have him not have any color on it. So the way you do that is with a track mat. So I'm going to go back to the project panel. Add a copy of Surfing down below here. I'm going to turn off the top one for a moment. Let's add hue saturation to that bottom one. Let's add a fast blur to it too. Fast blur, there we go. And we got that one done there. Now we're going to color that one a bit. Make it really obviously different, like so. Maybe even up the saturation a bit so it's pretty obvious. Then go down to fast blur and make it pretty blurry and repeat the edge pixels like so. So now that's all taken care of. What I want to do now is then turn on this one above here, the surfing like so, and I need to get the track mat put on for him. So I'm going to go down to toggle switches and mode so we can see the track mat. I'm going to put on track mat for the surfing layer above him, make it alpha mat. So there you go. Now what I need to do is I need to track the motion. So we've got this thing set up, I think, so it works pretty well. So we highlight him with the track mat. So now we need to go to the process of actually connecting the tracker keyframes to him. So we need to go back to tracker. So the motion source should be the top one there. And then we can see that tracker one is selected. There's only one tracker anyways. Now we need to edit the target. The target's going to be the white solid as opposed to the shape layer or the one below him. So that's the white solid, that's good. Click OK. Remember, now you need to apply. People will forget that. There we go, X and Y, yep, that's fine. And now let's see if the motion follows him. It does, looks good. Even when he goes to the top of the screen there, excellent. And the thing about working with a solid like this with a mask on it, if the motion does get a little bit off there, you can go to the mask and keyframe the mask path. You do that, you can always move this around a little bit, let's say like that, and keyframe that. And you're going to sort of override the position keyframes down here just a little bit. But you can do that separately from the position keyframes, just to kind of fine tune the adjustments. 
So there you go. That's how you take tracker keyframes to highlight motion like this, to have an object follow motion, or to have an effect feature point follow motion.